Hey guys, in a recent survey that we put out in our email newsletter, which you should sign up for if you aren't already, we asked you guys what you wanna see more of in our videos. And you said you like our not comparison videos. So we've got one for you today. It's stopper knots. I saw on Reddit that a couple of people were wondering what the difference is between a lot of the different stopper knots, what the benefits of each are. So we've got four of them for you today. The first one is the double overhand. So I'm gonna be tying these in pair max today. You can tie these in any kind of rope, but this is a good way to test knots because nylon is really slippery. And so if we tie something like an overhand knot, it's gonna show that that's not a great knot. It kind of slides towards the end, which we don't want happening. So this first one, the double overhand, is just kind of a, an additional turn on that simple overhand knot that you're used to. So what I like to do is tying this around two fingers. And we just wrap it around once. And on that second time around, we put the end through the loop. And we get that. This next one is the Ashley Stopper Knot. This one was popularized by Clifford Ashley. I think there's also some other names for it, but this is what it's come to be known as now. It's not a pretty looking knot. It's very irregular and just kind of looks like a jumbled mess but it's one of the best stopper knots because of how wide it is. So you can thread your rope through a piece of hardware and have that nice wide knot to keep it from pulling back out. To make the Ashley stopper, we just wanna bend our rope into a U, an upside down U, and then we're gonna fold it down so that we have two loops. We wanna bring that left one, or the one attached to our standing end, underneath and up through the other loop and then we'll pull our end to cinch it down. Then we'll take that same end and bring it up through the remaining loop. Pull on your standing end and you have your Ashley stopper. The next knot is the figure eight stopper knot. And this one is used a lot in climbing and I'm not gonna attempt to give you climbing advice because that would be a very bad idea on my part but you can tell where it gets its name from. It looks exactly like a figure eight. This one's easy to tie and untie, and it also has some other purposes. So let's make it. I'm gonna start with my cord on the top this time. We're gonna start by just making a single loop with our working end on top. And then we'll bring that working end around the back and put it down through the loop. And that's all there is to the figure eight. You wanna make sure it's dressed nice and tightly before using it. So I'm gonna tie this knot for you again, and I'll show you another useful feature of this knot. We'll just leave a little bit more slack on the end this time. So before we tighten that down, we can take our loop and just trail it right back through the knot following that standing end and being careful not to cross over itself. So that when you pull it tight, it sits nice and flat like this. And if you're a climber out there, you might tell me I'm doing this part wrong too. So don't take my advice if you're using this for climbing again. But now we have a nice end loop and that's often used to secure a climber to the end of a rope. Using a carabiner, you can then attach it to your harness. And our last stopper knot is the Alpine Butterfly Loop. You've probably heard of this knot. It's not really a stopper knot. It's actually a midline loop. Um, and you can tie it in the bite, which is why this one is so useful. So if you need to make a stopper when you don't have access to either of your ends, this is an ideal choice. You just wanna make sure that you leave a big enough loop that it's not gonna slip through. I like to tie this knot in my hand. So I'm gonna hook it around my thumb and then up across my fingers, around the back of my hand, and then straight across, and then around once more, and down. So I should have a stripe across my fingers and an X across my palm. Then I'm gonna grab that loop on my fingers and bring it down to the bottom, and then reach through and pull it up. 
At this point, I can take it off of my hand and pull the loop and both ends. And there we have our alpine butterfly. So there was our four stopper knots. They definitely range in difficulty and in the features or their use. Hope you guys found this one helpful. If you did, leave us a like or a comment. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.